how long would it take to catch a shiny Pokemon of every single type in the game? That's 18 uniquely typed shinies, all without using any outbreaks or shiny sandwich boosts. Well, for some reason, I wanted to find out. And by the way, for every shiny I find, I'll be ranking that type against all of the others to eventually form my ultimate tier list of every type in the game. And this all begins with one of my fastest shinies ever. Ten seconds. It took me 10 seconds to find this shiny Gardevoir, and about 9 of those was me packing up my picnic and then turning around. Wait. Wait. What? The entire reason I started this challenge was because of this Gardevoir. An S tier shiny, of course, but I started thinking about Pokemon typings. Like, Fairy and Psychic is kinda cool, but which types did I actually like the most? Or the least? Are my opinions trash? Some people sure think so, and that's okay. I wanted to use this Gardevoir as a starting point to a shiny challenge I'd never done before, and I wanted to learn a little bit more about what you guys think about all the types, too. We're all entitled to our own opinions, and I just hope that you guys will respect mine just as I'll respect yours. Whew, now that I got that crap out of the way, Fairy S tier. If you disagree, you're wrong. Look at the title of the tier list. Peak typing. Sorry, I don't make the rules. As you could probably guess, this challenge took me a long time and it actually ended up burning me out a few times. When you shiny hunt as much as me, it does feel pretty nice to take a break with some fresh new games every once in a while, and actually, one of the new games I've been playing non-stop recently also happens to be the sponsor of this very challenge. And that game is Honkai Star Rail, a brand new immersive adventure RPG from the creators of Genshin Impact. With absolutely stunning graphics, unique characters, and tons of fast-paced action, to say I was hyped for this game's release would be an understatement. It's no secret I'm a fan of collecting rare, cool-looking things in games. I mean, that's kind of my entire brand now. So when I hear a game like Star Rail combines absolutely beautiful visuals and world building with incredibly designed characters to collect and use in combat, I, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty much already sold at that point. In Honkai Star Rail, you're pretty much free to explore its entire universe, solving puzzles, finding secrets, and play as your favorite characters all along the way. This girl, Herta, has really been growing on me lately, and I just, I just can't put my finger on why that might be. Genuinely though, if you're looking for a fun new world to get lost in, come play some Honkai Star Rail. It's completely free on PC and mobile, and there really isn't a better time to get started playing. Big shout out to Hoyoverse and Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. Remember, no shiny sandwiches or outbreaks are being used here. This is solely the shiny charm trying to hard carry this challenge. And I guess I forgot to turn it on for the psychic type because this one took me 10 hours. Any shinies at all today? <laughs> what? There is no way that just happened. I complained one time and a shiny pops up. A shiny male Indeedee, not one I would normally be very excited about. But after hunting all day, he was beautiful. Now let's talk Psychic type. Honestly, not as cool as Fairy, but still a pretty Chad type. Like seeing Abra for the first time as a kid in Ruby and Sapphire, that was hype. Tapu Lele, Latios, Latias, come on. Psychic types, they're, they're just cool. They're just very cool. I spent the next hour or so hunting for a shiny Gulpin with a poison encounter sandwich, but this is the grass section. Gulpin, Gulpin isn't a grass type. It, oh. Uh, shiny Hoppip, a cute little dude, especially with his helicopter head. We've also now reached our first type in the trio of starter types, grass, fire, and water. Now, if you're subscribed to me and you've watched me for a while, you'll know that I'm a grass gamer. I like grass starters, and a lot of my favorite shinies are grass Pokemon. Would I call it peak? Not quite, but it's very close, very close. So it goes in very cool. This next shiny, I would actually argue, is one of the best shinies of its entire type. Like, just straight up a top dog, and it's also one of my favorite shiny alpha Pokemon I own back in Legends Arceus. The OG Nokimon crew knows, wait a second, it's shiny Heracross. I've said before and I'll say it again, you cannot hate this shiny. It's a great Pokemon, has a super bright shiny, and now a bug type has been checked off in the truck. Now while the shiny itself is nice, what do we think about the bug type in general? Well, I mean, it sucks, let's just get that out of the way. Despite it being one of the weakest types, I actually like it quite a bit. 
There's some really underrated bug Pokemon and Shinies out there, and I'd say this type sits comfortably in the nice category. I'm a fan. So the Shinies have been appearing pretty quickly ever since that Ndidi put me in the dirt for an entire day, and this one was no different. With a bug encounter boost still running, I moved over to the desert to see if I could snag my first fire type for the challenge, Larvesta. Unfortunately, the actual shiny I found was, um, not the flashiest shiny in the world, let's put it that way. Is that a shiny? Shiny Thampy. Can't say I would ever intentionally hunt for this Pokemon Yay. in my life, but I got a ground type. If you thought my lack of interest stopped just at the shiny, you'd be wrong. Ground type, pretty forgettable to me. But it just barely squeaks by in the decent tier because of a few cool Pokemon and me thinking the move Earthquake was the coolest thing in the world when I was like nine. The dark type hunt started with a pretty disappointing few hours of me looking for a shiny of this Pokemon right here. No, 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 not that dog. This dog. Unfortunately, this dog never turned blue. But just a few minutes later, I ran into a new type of dog. This, is, this isn't actually a dog. Shiny Murkrow, the little competitive VGC bird that could, except it's pink. I was actually pretty happy about this one. It's a really cool Pokemon and shiny I hadn't gotten in this game yet. And it's pretty OP in Scarlet and Violet double battles, believe it or not. The dark type is secured for the challenge and Okay, are there actually people out there that, that don't like this type? Just overall. I feel like it's just a given that this goes in higher tiers of typings. I'm saying like solid A tier. I mean, come on, Weavil, Absol, Umbreon. Like th this is one of those types that if you put it in a low tier, I I'm just gonna need to ask you some questions. That's it, just some questions. It's edgy and it's cool, baby. We're 15 hours in so far with only seven shinies and finishing this challenge is feeling pretty intimidating. Speaking of intimidating things, this steel shiny I found after a few hours might just be Scarlet and Violet's most daunting and terrifying new Pokemon to ever be released. I love this Pokemon. <laughs> shiny Orthworm, the dupiest, goofiest dude in the desert, all in his new metallic blue paint. Oh my gosh, uh, you can't not love this dumb worm. And now the steel type is checked off. Speaking of the steel type, this might be the type to have grown on me the most over the years of playing Pokemon. What probably would have started down here when I was a kid has slowly moved up to a type I consider to be a really cool one. Also, Skarmory, Mawile, and Bronzong are some of the rawest Pokemon to ever exist. What's up, big dog? This next shiny was not the longest of the challenge, but it was absolutely the hardest. Why? Because you can barely tell in the overworld if this thing is shiny or not. It, it's pretty much impossible. Like, you can't look at me in the eyes and tell me you would know that this was the shiny at first glance. You just can't. But I know some of you out there would say you could, and to you, all I say is, this isn't even the shiny. This is the actual shiny. See what I mean? Welcome home, Mr. Slowpoke. At least you evolve into something cooler so all my work doesn't go to waste. And since we already have a psychic type, this little guy adds one to the water type. The second of the starter trio is another big favorite of mine. While grass does slightly edge it out for me, I simply cannot put water any lower than A tier. Shiny Milotic was one of my first favorite early shinies I'd ever hunted for, and Kyogre was my first legendary ever as a kid. And you already know, nine-year-old Noki was spamming sheer cold through the entire Elite Four and having a blast doing it. Water type, banger. Now you'll notice the tier list so far is slightly top heavy. <laughs> well, don't worry, we're gonna be evening that up here real soon. But as for the shiny, well, it's a flying type this time. But it, I mean, it really shouldn't be a flying type. This is probably one of the least flying type Pokemon out of all of the flying type Pokemon in existence. But it has an absolute banger of a shiny. Shiny Gyarados. Caught while lagging on Castle Royal Lake, a classic, but holy cow, this shiny looks so good in this game. Like I actually, this game did Gyarados justice. This is an amazing shiny for the dragon part of our, I mean, flying part of our challenge. All right, flying type, that's what we're doing. Yeah, this type is all right. I'd say slightly better than ground, but still just decent. I feel like most flying types I like, I like them because of their other type, not the flying type. It's not bad by any means, but I take almost all of the types above it any day. Ah, fire type. We've got a lot to talk about in this section, both about the shiny and the typing itself. Let's start with my shiny. I had been hunting Larvesta on and off basically since I started this challenge in between other types. So a lot of the fire type hunting had already started, but this Larvesta would just not shine. So I needed a break, a new target. I wanted a cool shiny, an underrated one, one that I'd never hunted before. And I landed on these guys. 
How are you alive, by the way? This hunt was the one I was most satisfied with completing, not only because it took me nearly 11 hours total with the Larvesta hunts included, but because the shiny that appeared was already evolved. <gasps> shiny Camera, the leader of the pack and one of my favorite underrated shinies in this game. Incredibly happy to finish off the starter type trio with this guy, but now it's time to spit some fire. This type isn't that cool. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just keeping it real. It's solid. Some really cool Pokemon and starters. In fact, my first starter ever was a fire type. I love him. But some of the powerful fire type Pokemon that usually end up on people's favorites list just never really did it for me. Also, the first time I ever saw Heatran, I'm pretty sure I just never wanted to open my eyes again. It's decent. I would even argue the top of decent. But as a member of the Grass Gang, that's about as far as it goes for me. I hope the fire fam out there can forgive me someday. It's normal type time, and there's only one Pokemon I'm going to for this shiny. We're playing the Dunsparce Lottery, baby. I don't even care about the shiny. That is, until it evolves. A 1 in 100 chance to get the elusive three-segment shiny to Dunsparce. And you want to know what happened with this one? Look, I'm not even going to waste you guys' time. It was a regular one. <laughs> normal type is... You can't see me right now, but I'm, I'm making this face. I mean, come on, it's normal. It's boring. Sure, there are some cool Pokemon out there, but like, who really goes out of their way to kick off any of these other types on their team for this thing? Not me, I'll tell you that. A classic tier type. I learned something new on this part of the hunt. I learned that Voltorbs explode in the overworld, but not if they're blue. This shiny Voltorb came only after about an hour of adventuring around this area, but it felt a lot faster than that. I think this might actually be my first shiny non hisuian Voltorb now that I think of it, and he's pretty cool. And I think that's about how I would describe the electric type too. Not very cool, but pretty cool. I like it. There's some awesome electric types out there, and can't forget about good old Pikachu. Solid type. We have now arrived at the ghost type section, a special section for reasons we'll discuss here shortly, but first, it's time to talk sand, like beaches and sandcastles. Black sandcastles. This sandy gas, which by the way is an absolutely sick shiny, appeared only like 15 minutes after my Voltorb. A perfect fit for a luxury ball and a wonderful addition to my ghost type shiny collection. Now, ghost type, hmm. Where would I rank this type? This one's pretty tough, I don't know. Peak, absolute, Top of the line, superb perfection. This is the best type in the game. I will not be taking comments, questions, or concerns on this one. Character designs, in-game locations, and of course, Pokemon, all peak. Wanna know one way to make a type cooler? Add a ghost type secondary. It's just fact. Ghost gang, moving on. I knew exactly who I wanted for the poison type. Similar to Camerupt, I wanted a shiny that I didn't hear much about, but was still super nice and the poison type Pokemon that fit the bill better than any of the others was Seviper. My Gen 3 bias might be leaking in here, but this Pokemon and Shiny are seriously sick. This one took me a few hours, but to nab a great poison type Shiny like this, it was worth it. Poison is nice. It's a, it's a nice type. And I almost decided to leave it here in the nice tier where I think a lot of people would agree with me, but then I remembered Crobat. I remembered Trubbish and Tentacool and Toxapex and Gengar. And it's very cool, just barely. You know, we've made it all the way to the 15th type, and I'm just now realizing something. I haven't found a single shiny of a type we already had yet. Like, everything has fit so nicely and uniquely into the challenge, it's actually been kind of nice. Oh, that's a ground type. We don't need that now, do we? Oh, that's a grass type. We really didn't need that one now, do we? Oh, that's a grass and flying type. That's just not even close to a rock. There we go. Eight hours for this blue dog. Pretty cool shiny, not gonna lie. Not worth it though. Not worth it. <laughs> this type? Eh. Yeah. It's not bad. It, I genuinely don't feel like I dislike any type in Pokemon. They all have their strengths and there are a few pretty solid rock types out there. A few, but not enough. <laughs> this one is cuddling up right above normal in the tier. These last three shinies are a little bit special, so we're actually grouping them all together for the finale of this challenge. At some point, I did one big loop around the entire map, just because 
I don't know, for fun. <laughs> Look, when you spend over 40 hours doing a challenge, that's just kind of the stuff that ends up being fun, so just leave me alone. Well, along that loop, I found every shiny I needed. Every single one. Fighting, dragon, and ice. I actually found a fourth too, this low kicks, but I didn't need a bug, so this guy isn't important. Each one of these types goes into a unique tier on my tier list. Three types, three different tiers. I want you guys to guess. Guess the order I ranked these types. If you guess correctly, I'll... I don't know, what am I supposed to do? It'll, it'll make you feel cool. <laughs> These three shinies found all within like an hour session finished off my challenge. But as for the tier list, well, fighting type wins. Wins the reward for being the lowest ranked among the three. <laughs> it's, it's decent, it's decent. I'd probably put it right around here. It's definitely got some cool Pokemon, but I don't know, never was hugely impactful on me. It was a little forgettable, but it's still kind of cool. In second place, the mighty dragon type, which might surprise some of you. Dragon is usually a really highly rated type, and for good reason, it's it's super cool. But I feel like lately the dragons in games haven't been, I don't know, speaking to me as much, and as such, I feel like it's just a nice type now. And that leaves Ice, one of the weakest, worst types in the entire game. It's peak. <laughs> I know, I know, this one's probably pretty unpopular, but it's been one of my favorite types ever since I was a kid, and I mean, I literally chose my favorite Pokemon based on my top two favorite types. I'm not kidding, I looked up Ghost and Ice type Pokemon online as a kid, and Frostless popped up, and she's been the number one homie ever since. Well, there you have it. The trial of the types has been completed. Over 20 shinies found, and a few amazing stories to come out of it. And as for the completed tier list, well first, hey everyone that skipped to the end to see the tier list, what's up? Don't worry, I would have done the same thing. But you do have to subscribe now that you've been caught. That's just how it works around here, it's just how it works. Anyway, this tier list turned out to be a pretty accurate representation of how I view types in Pokemon. Obviously, they're all my personal opinions, and I mostly just want to hear what you guys think. Also, I'm open to being convinced to change any type ratings. Give me your finest essays in the comments. I'll read them. Alright, I've played this game for way too long. I'm gonna go, in the meantime, click on this convenient video that just popped up. Yep, that one. It's probably pretty good.